Greetings. Greetings. Anybody here consider themselves a perfect communicator? <laughs> Who would like to define for me what their personal definition of communication is? Listening, understanding, interacting, connecting. How do you know you've done all that effectively? Communication. Light bulb on all the Just yours? Is the other person involved in this at all? No, 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 the other person, so that's what okay. done speaking for them. Okay. Anybody else? How do you know you're effective at doing any of that? Listening, connecting. Watching. Yes. When the per when the person receiving the communication gets gets the exact message in which you intended to give out. Know. Read my notes. <laughs> and how do you know that you've accomplished that? That they have gotten the very meaning you intended? By their actions. By their actions? Do you ask? Their expressions? Do you ask? Yeah. Ask them? What do you ask them? What do they you ask them, do you understand? And they say, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean you have understanding now? Give us the answer, Brian. <laughs> Tell us. Okay. The, the, the main topic of what I'm discussing here is the number one social strategy. Now, let me give you a little background on myself. Myself, my three sons, and my wife are all on the autism spectrum. People who meet me don't realize that about me because I've spent the past 20 years figuring out how to close the communication gap between myself and everybody else. Because my entire life has been spent being picked last being left out, being misunderstood. I've gotten so good at it that the name of my flagship coaching program is No Misunderstandings. Because I teach people how to close that gap. And it's interesting to hear some of the answers today. You know, you, you just look at them, their actions. There's this myth out there that, well, and I'll read you the formula here. I'm sure many of you have heard this. That communication is 7% words. Familiar with this? 38% voice quality, and 55% nonverbal. This is some of the most misquoted research in history. <laughs> okay? What some people don't realize is that this formula refers only to the communication of emotion. It does not refer to communication in general. So let me show you the circumstances under which this is accurate. No, I'm not mad. No, I'm perfectly fine. I'm not mad at all. Now, what am I feeling? Okay? So 7% of that communication was the words I used. But what was the more compelling part? The 38% that was voice quality? No, I'm not mad. <laughs> and 55% nonverbal. Under those circumstances, that's accurate. But for communication in general, it's not. Because what some people use that to mistakenly assume is that by looking how, but I, what somebody's doing, how they're acting, that you actually know what they're thinking. <laughs> In fact, one of the greatest disservices that a lot of social skills trainings for people on the spectrum, one of the greatest disservices they do is they encourage mind reading. What do you think the other person's thinking? Just read their body language. What do you think they're thinking? So what skill are we not being taught? <laughs> We're not being taught how to speak, how to ask questions. We're not being taught the number one social strategy, which is clarification. Uh -huh. Just as you mentioned before, how do you know that what you meant is the meaning they understand? Because in preparation for this, I looked up the definition of communication. And it was the exchange of information. That's it? <laughs> there must be understanding. Understanding occurs, connection occurs, when we assign the same meaning to that information. That's when we connect with each other. Now, clarification occurs when we've agreed on what we're going to do with that information. What action is going to be taken now? Simply saying, well, do you understand? Yep. They go off and they do it wrong. You say, well, I thought you said you understood. Well, I assumed. I assumed you understood what I meant. That's one of the saboteurs of clarification. Assumption. Right? Anybody here assume? 
Why do we assume? Because it's faster. It's faster? Because they think people think like we think. Ah, that's projection. We think people think as we think. Why wouldn't you agree with me? It makes sense. <laughs> Assumption is when you put information in there that was not actively communicated. You fill in the gaps. So why do we assume? Why don't we simply ask for what we need? Why don't we ask for clarification? Why don't we make sure that we were understood the way we meant to be understood? When you have employees, if you, you want to go on in business, you, you learn that. Yeah. You learn to do it. But when you have children. Self-preservation. You don't do enough. And in my research, asking people, why don't you just ask? Because if you don't spot a lot of nonverbal communication, which I don't, I rely heavily on verbal. I need to ask questions to figure out what you're showing me in this little nonverbal dance you're doing that I'm not getting any of it, so I need you to verbalize it. So I need to ask questions. And some people are, you're being rude, you're being too forward. No, I want us to connect. I want to do you the respect of making sure I am understanding you the way you want to be understood. When I did all the research to ask people, why don't you simply ask? The question, the answer was the same across the board, because I'm afraid you'll be mad at me. People would rather assume, project, and dodge because they don't want to be the receiving end of anger. Right. What happens when they don't clarify right off the bat? They go off, they screw it up, and what do they get? Anger. <laughs> and they don't make the connection. They don't realize they're simply delaying the very thing that they could have prevented right off the bat. Clarification is king. It's the one thing of all the many strategies that can almost guarantee that you close that gap. Any gap between what you mean, what I need to understand you meaning, and what action are we going to take based on our mutual understanding? I want to so throw some things in here about confidence. No communication is more important than our inner dialogue. What meaning do we assign to the events of our lives? What meaning do we assign to the communication we're having? What do we tell ourselves about us, about our own effectiveness in the world? When we assign meaning to the events, to communication, a lot of it is personalized. Is that fair to say? We draw these unnecessary conclusions that this means that I have more or less value. Now, clarification in terms of inside your own internal dialogue, what if you saw it fast instead of assumption? Well, a person treated me this way, therefore it means I'm stupid. Even though the person might not have said that to you, that was your conclusion. In order to frame this discussion, the definitions help. The dictionary is generalizable. You need something specifically for you, specific strategy. How would you define confidence? Because we all want to be confident, but how do we define it? Any specific aspect of yourself? That you can succeed. Define success. <laughs> that I can do whatever I need to do. The task at hand. Whatever it is. My, my definition of confidence is absolute certainty that I can be effective in the areas I want to be effective in. That I can create results based on my own actions. Because if you think that confidence is just a belief, but there's nothing to back that up, it's hard to maintain that belief. That's why I say clarification is also action-based. When we agree to what we're going to do as a result of this communication, we have clarification. You have clarification in your own mind in terms of your own confidence, your own abilities to take action and create results because it's action-based. I can do this. I can prove it. I have this experience of being effective. Therefore, I have confidence that I can count on. I have to rely on everybody else to tell me that I'm good enough. I can do it and prove it. Clarification is based on action. If you can experience it, who can tell you differently? Make sense? So in your communication, 
insist upon clarification. Close the gaps between yourselves and each other. Because that's what connection's all about. That's what life is all about. Relationships, more of them, deeper and stronger. Thank you very much. Well, questions too.